yes. <laughs> I would be getting a phone call from my mom. Like, excuse me. Yeah. Don't call me mom. Um, but you got to get that shovel and you got to get that root and say, hey, why is this so big? Why am I feeling this way? And you can't do it on your own. That is the other thing about the show. The real deal is no one figures out this life by themselves. It is impossible, right? There's so many, just like you, only you have something to offer that no one else can offer. There's someone who can see something that you cannot see, right? In yourself. It's like, look, hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're a little too hard on yourself, right? Uh, I love it. You, I you're love criticizing it. yourself too much, right? Um, Brie, tell everybody your thoughts when you see this, well, I'll pop it up on the screen. Imposter mm. syndrome. Yeah. Give us your thoughts on that. Yeah. How does that affect self-worth? Well, when it comes to imposter syndrome, I mean, first off, it's still, it's a hot button term that everybody's using now. It's like imposter syndrome. You might have imposter syndrome or get over your imposter syndrome and all this other kind of stuff. But no one actually dives deep into what imposter syndrome really is, you know? And so to, to like water down the definition, it's basically the inability to acknowledge your accomplishments or your self-worth, you know, it, that's what it all boils down to. And I tell anybody, the moment that you breathe life into this world, the moment that you find yourself in this world, you have self-worth. No, no matter if your parents told you you didn't, no matter if your parents wanted you or not, no matter if, if you've made some mistakes, because we all do, you have self-worth. And those mistakes that you've made, they also have worth, you know, because a lot of people can learn from them. You can learn from them. You can, you can put a better, you know, self out to the world when you go through these things. And self-worth and imposter syndrome go hand in hand, right? A lot of times when people are suffering from imposter syndrome, they have a false definition of what self-worth is. They believe it's something that they have to strive for, something that they have to um, achieve because that's what society tells us. That's what Instagram tells us. If you don't have the house, if you can't go on the vacations, if you don't have the car, if you don't have the things, if you don't have all the degrees, you don't have any worth. You don't have anything to off offer. And that's just not true because no one else is like you, right? Um, on my show, The Real Deal with Brie Clark, we talk all the time about telling people that you are the real deal because that is very true. It's not just a gimmick. It's not just a slogan that we came up with. You are the real deal. No matter where you are today, no matter what's happening today, no, where, no matter where you find yourself today, you are the real deal because there's only one you. There's no one else like you, no one else that has your DNA, no one else that, you know, smiles like you and has, has your teeth, has your fingerprints and other those things. And so that is where your self-worth should, should come from, that there's only one me and no one can offer what I can offer because there is no one exactly like me. And How so, did you get started talking like this? Look at you. Yeah. You're just on a roll. <laughs> you were on a roll. You said my girlfriend. two favorite terms. You said pop syndrome. You said self-worth. I'm like, okay, let's go. <laughs> I was like, man, I can't even get in here, man. <laughs> no, that was no, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. I just curious, I'm just curious to ask because I, yeah. I haven't asked you this. Uh, how did you get started down this journey? Yeah. Being a person who talks about the real deal, self-worth, imposter syndrome. Yeah. Well, it's been a lot of time, last decade in television. And um, you're you're asked to have it all together. You know, you're supposed to look the part, talk the part and, and everything. And while most of us, when, when you're seeing us, we're bringing ourselves, most of us are taught that whatever we're doing, it needs to be better that next time. It needs to be polished that next time. You need to do this better. You need right, to sound, right, right, sound, right. You know, all those things. Gotta be perfect. Gotta yeah, be perfect. Yeah, pretty much. And so I remember that when I really started looking at the people around me, I started realizing we're we're all suffering with, with something. The ones that were honest, you know, about it. We're all suffering with this burnout and this striving and wanting to be. Um, and so I had heard the term imposter syndrome years before, but I'd never really dived deep into it. I didn't do much research. And when I did start doing research, I found out that there wasn't a lot out there, but the little that I did find started helping me put some of these emotions that I was feeling together. You know, um, I had been in TV for a while, um, but realized that that wasn't 100 percent what I wanted to do. It was something that someone told me I'd be good at, but it wasn't necessarily something that I 
um, saw myself doing or saw a lot of worth in, you know, I felt depleted a lot of times at the end of the day. And so um, when I was approached to do a talk show, I said, if it's going to be about anything, it's going to be about imposter syndrome, because there's a lot of people that need to know that this is what they're dealing with. It's not the depression. It's not the anxiety. While these two things may go hand in hand, a lot of people are suffering with imposter syndrome. And if they identify that that is what they're dealing with, it will help them with some of these other things that they're finding themselves dealing with. Um, but you got to get that shovel and you got to get that root and say, hey, why is this so big? Why am I feeling this way? And you can't do it on your own. That is the other thing about the show. The real deal is no one figures out this life by themselves. It is impossible, right? There's so many, just like you, only you have something to offer that no one else can offer. There's someone who can see something that you cannot see, right? In yourself. It's like, look, hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're a little <laughs> too hard on yourself, right? Uh, I love it. You, I you're love criticizing it. yourself too much, right? And okay, that's I got, a I got a, type of person. I got to pull that out of you one more time. So yeah. sometimes, what? Only you can see? How did you say that? You just said something there. About see. Sometimes there's only someone else who can see that thing that you need to. They're not going to see it the way that you see it, right? Dropping knowledge, sister. That was yeah. good. I liked it. That was good. <laughs> that was good. That was and really so good. I, I have given several people permission in my life to say, hey, Brie, you were tripping, right? <laughs> we need to rethink this thing, right? Uh, um, or to tell them, you know, I tell them, you know what? For example, I'll say, you know, I remember when I was trying to create the show, The Real Deal. And the thought that kept coming to me, who am I to have a talk show, right? Wow. My 10 years of journalism did not matter to me. All of my experience before in public relations didn't matter to me. All of my time helping other podcasters start their own <laughs> podcasts <laughs> oh did God. not matter to me. It was who am I to have my own talk show? I have nothing to offer. And you're, I have feeding all this, you're feeding everybody else. Yes, but I'm not oh. feeding myself. I'm not seeing that self-worth, right? Yeah. Um, and I had all of these lists of things on the reasons why that when it came down to it, it didn't matter. It was me feeling like I was inadequate for some reason, right? And so I had someone say, hey, Bree, let's, let's look at the facts. And they brought the facts to my attention. Hey, you're a journalist. And I'm like, yeah, well, I wasn't on CNN. How many journalists get on CNN, Bree? right? Oh, well, you know, I'm not Oprah. Yeah, maybe you don't need to be Oprah, right? I had people come and say, you know, maybe the world doesn't need another Oprah because no. they have an Oprah. To you, and I want you to just talk about it. And okay. then we're going to get to something else. But here we go. The word, it's not going to pop up on the screen, but just say whatever pops into your mind. When you hear this four letter word, the four letter word is rest, R E S T. Mm. What pops yes. into your mind? Oh, two things, because I fight with it a lot. Um, necessity and difficulty. Mm. Both of those things mm. pop up into my head. The reason why is because for a long time, especially people who suffer from imposter syndrome or, or striving or a lack of self-worth, feel that rest takes away from their worth. If I have to rest, that means that I am not capable of doing something. If I have to rest, that, that means that I'm weak. If I have to rest, that means that I am not the right person for the job, right? W which is not the case. I mean, we need rest. Like our bodies, everything. It Plants can't sit out in the sun all day. There's a nighttime cycle, right? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you know, man. No, 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 no. Hold on one second. No, hold on one second. That Thank was you. good. Thank you very much. To, yeah. to, 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 our big, to our big studio audiences here today. No, just kidding. Go ahead. That was good. Well we, well, we need rest. We need it. And for a long time, for me, rest felt lazy. It felt like laziness. Um, my dad is a hard worker. I love him to death. I'm a big daddy's girl. Um, he taught me how to cut the grass. I would paint. I mean, you should see some of the, I mean, I know, know like, I know that I look like I don't get dirty, but I do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I do the things. Like, I, I mean, I do the things um, and I love it. You know, I'll go out there and fix the car. I'll do those things. My dad was big on work and that's how we bonded. And for a long time, my attachment was to work was love. 
I will not be loved and appreciate if I, appreciated if I'm not working. And so rest was hard for me because I, I didn't I didn't see that happen. But now as I'm older, I'm realizing he did rest. He just rested alone, you know, like like people do. <laughs> right. right? right. Um, and so rest is important, but rest does not mean sleeping. Um, mm. Because for a while, they're like, well, I slept. So it's like, yes, you slept. You did do, do, do that. <laughs> you're right. Maybe you got your eight hours, but did you find something restful? And rest to me is not going to be the same as rest for you. Rest yeah. for me is me painting a wall. That is that is rest. Oh, right? wow. Okay. All right. Yeah. Rest for okay. my husband is playing a video game. You know, rest for my son, all the energy he has, my little five year old, right? Rest for him is playing with his little gujitsus, right? That is how they rest, right? And I rest. Um, and it's very important to find that because you can't do anything. You can't be successful at anything if you don't find the balance of rest. And it's not going to be perfect. You're, you're never going to have a perfect balance of rest in life and work. It's not going to happen that way. But if you can get as close as possible, you will be set up better for it, right? Staying up until okay. five o'clock in the morning is not going to help you get that promotion. It's just not. How are you holding up considering yeah. now that you are, well, with child? Yeah. Yes, I am pregnant. Yes. Okay, I'll uh, give you I one of these again. Another one, another one coming out. <laughs> yes, uh, we are early. I am, I am having to find the balance. <laughs> between that, you know, because I, uh, I had I already, you know, I was like, yeah, I'm doing the thing. I figured out rest and everything. And then you throw being pregnant on top of yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. it's uh, I am finding that I have to give myself grace because there are things that I can't do that I want to do. You know, I can't go. There are naps that I have to take <laughs> and I get angry. <laughs> Look when at I have you. To take Look naps. at you. Yeah. I'm so young talking about naps. <laughs> it's just. Really... Yeah. Yeah. So I'm you like, find you find. You find that the naps, the rest you need to get, help you hold on to your self worth instead of attacking your self worth yeah. as if you're not sufficient. Yes, and it's a daily it's a daily process. I'm not going to say that I have it completely figured out because I'm not going to. This, this is the real deal. I'm not going to lie to y'all and say yeah. that I have this figured out. Um, but I do know the steps and the processes when it comes to my thought process and rest that I have to take. When I'm starting to feel like, darn it, I took a two hour nap and there was this things that I needed to do. And I, mm. I go through that beating up process and I have oh, to say, wait a minute, hold on, hold on. Did you need to rest? Yes. Okay. Did you have an option not to sleep? No. Okay. So <laughs> we're going to wrap this up because, of course, we don't want to take too much of your time. We've already talked yeah. about how long we were going to try to do this. So uh, as you listen to the show, it may seem like I'm, I'm cutting Brie off, but Brie and I know. She's trusting me that I move this along within a certain time frame because she needs to get her rest. And she has a, a, an actual TV show that she she does with your years of experience, journalists, a TV hosts and a number of things uh, that yeah. you do. There's so much on uh, your horizon that you and your hubby are looking to try to do. But I need to move to this part of the show in which we do this. Yes. The advice segment of the show. So. Yeah. Give some advice to individuals who maybe need rest, dealing mm -hmm. with trauma, self-worth. We've touched on those things. How can they hold on to their self-worth? What advice can you give them based upon, well, what we've talked about today? Yeah. yeah. I mean, if they've liked what I've heard so far, on The Real Deal, we have, we're in the middle of our second season, but our whole first season is seven ep seven episodes that talks about posture, self-worth, and all the different things that it can be attached to. We talked about how it's attached to social media and comparison culture. We talked about how it could be attached to fallen dreams or dreams that you feel like you have not been able to pursue. We even break down in the whole first episode, I sit down with Angela Garrigan and we talk about, uh, she's a LCSW, and we talk all about how you can, uh, what imposter syndrome is and how you can uh, identify it, 
what it looks like, the five types, because it, I mean, it, there's, it looks like this for different people. Uh, we talk about how it shows up in men. Um, so we, we break down in each episode what you can do. And then in the comments, we have different materials. There is um, Lisa Orbe Austin. She has a book called Your Unstoppable Greatness. And then there's Val Valerie Young, who has spearheaded the Imposter Syndrome Academy to help people figure that out. Sooner or later, we were going to have a book ourselves uh, for the real deal, where we talk about um, imposter syndrome and navigating uh, life, journalism, and all the things uh, for, for some of our younger folks uh, just to kind of help them out. And you can find all of the, that stuff uh, on my channel at Brick Like TV, and you can also find it on the website. We also have some merchandise. <laughs> go on, go on. No, I ain't stopping you. Know? you. Keep going. Yeah. Go on, keep going. Keep going. And you, so, well, see, this is the thing. We have, you don't have we, no merch right there? You don't have no merch right there? That's my I bad. I mean, I do. I should have told you. Oh, you I mean, when you go to the website, I mean, okay, go to the website, I, you guys. I, yeah, Bree Clark TV, uh, dot com. Uh, go to the website, uh, that's Bree with one E. Go on, yeah. let me see. I want to see the merch. I, I know you showed me something. Pack. Let me see. Yeah, oh, okay, pack, I love it. Deal, you know, real deal. People do a fanny, fanny pack now, they're just kind of walking around with, with these things. Younger yes, folks. they are. <laughs> yes, yes, they um, are. Which is, it's just basically proclaiming it owning it, you know, and saying, yeah, I am the real deal. Because yeah. that was one of the best things that you can do today. Every yeah. morning when you wake up, instead of your long list of affirmations, yeah. just saying, Basically I am the what real you deal said and done today, well, the wait, audience I, is going to love it too. Everybody, doing. we're done. Um, but uh, go over to Brie Clark TV if you want more. Right, Brie? Uh, yes. Support her with her merch. Um, hey, if you just want to donate to her because she's having the baby, do that too. Uh, yeah. For the days that uh, uh, you feel you want to support her, uh, because uh, sometimes you need to get your rest. And yes. uh, that's like right about now. All right. We're <laughs> out of here, everybody. Uh, Bree, we'll give everybody a wave. Get it in my camera here somewhere. Yep. Wave, everybody. We'll see you guys later. All right. We're out of here. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Bree, thanks. Thank you. Appreciate it. We hope you enjoyed the show today. You can remember, get in, get a hold of Bree, uh, contact her. Uh, feel free to do so. Uh, we appreciate you guys supporting us here on NATV Network. Um, thank you. Our first show back in quite a while. Um, expect more from us over the summer. Uh, more shows just like this and a whole lot more. Um, we appreciate you immensely for all you've done for the past three years in supporting us. But get ready. We're going to take it up to a whole nother level. We appreciate you more each and every day.